there are several important considerations that need to be made when doing something like this or what, in some of the things that we we really thought hard about. Um, in this business model, the options affecting the price need to be configured before the split line process is allowed to begin to run in, in the runtime configuration session. This was because we needed to establish a price prior to completing the configuration. If this didn't happen, then you could go in and change all sorts of stuff and what would happen is you'd have multiply different priced items that would hit order lines that didn't agree with the quote that was given to the customer. And then you'd have a big mess. So the way we achieved this is once we started splitting the lines, we basically disabled all the other UI selections. Um, this was again a client's requirement and this is how they wanted their business flow to work. Another thing, some other things to look at. We had to be really careful about the size of the resulting order. Um, we haven't had many issues with this customization, but the only time we have had some problems with it is if we had orders of immense size, five, six hundred games, and, and they, this company has experienced something like that. Um, <clears throat> some of the issues, you know that could possibly happen would be table locking issues or some holds. Uh, we haven't experienced anything where we've lost data, we've just basically had to re-split the order. Another thing that we had to consider was how to split the order um, and, and keep track of the number of splits. I'm sure most of you are aware of the how in 11.5.10 the configurator, the old configurator engine handles math sometimes with not the most desired results. Um, this, we had to test this over and over again and what we finally ended up doing was using a, a simple extension to control the amount of splits because it, we just couldn't do it with how the simple addition and subtraction was taking place within the current model or with, with the old configurator engine. This has been changed in with the release of the new Fusion Configurator engine and, and controlling the number of instances and keeping track of them has greatly been enhanced with the new Fusion Configurator engine. Best practices when doing something like this? Um, the biggest reason we had success with this is we did a very careful analysis of the, the actual parts and structure of this model. Um, this customization obviously only works if you have a few variable options. I mean, if each and every one of these games was going to be configured completely differently, then there would be no reason for this type of a customization. Uh, a lot of why this was done is it has to be it had to be tied into how they actually price and sell their product. And as all of you should know, uh, if you're going to customize something like this, you need to test it and test it and test it again to make sure that your results are correct. Obviously this is a unique solution. Um, yeah, this is one of those tricks that is done with Configurator that's unique to this business. Um, would it work for other product types? I'm confident it would. In my business experience there's lots of other configurable products that only have one or two things that change and make them unique. Um, using the non-bomb component and how we tracked this information I think you know, is, is, a, is a useful way of possibly um, doing something like this in 11.5.10 with other types of products and models. And the last thing is, is there's, you know, we're just touching upon the configuration solution here. This was a, a large project and the custom portal itself and, and how business was done with contracts and other requirements drove us to the solution. Uh, it was not something that we would have recommended in the first place, but it was purely a client-driven client requirement.